Welcome to this satisfactory tutorial where I will explain the new fluid dynamics elements in the fluids update released late October 2020. First of all, Coffee Stain did not make any changes to how the fluid dynamics themselves work. So if you've come to this tutorial looking for a basic explanation for these elements, I highly encourage you to take a look at my first tutorial on the topic first, and then come back and watch this one after that, as this tutorial does contain some important information that clarifies a few of the things that I explain in the first tutorial. There should be a link to that tutorial in a card in the upper right, and you will also find a link for it in the video description, together with links for my most recent tutorial Let's Play series, and also to specific episodes in those series where I will respectively be covering coal power setup, aluminium setup, starter oil refinery setup, and finally advanced oil refinery setup for the late game. With that said, let's move on to the new features that Coffee Stain has added to the game with the fluids update, and these features I can very easily describe as very highly useful quality of life items that makes dealing with fluids a great deal easier and more efficient. Item 1 on the list is of course the new Mark II pipes. These pipes give us an impressive flow rate of 600 cubic meters per second, which is double the flow rate of the Mark I pipes with their flow rate of 300 cubic meters per second. The cost of building the Mark II pipes however make them a late game quality of life addition to the game as they do require alclad aluminium plates and plastic to build. The new pipes can massively simplify certain builds late game, especially if you're into building huge refineries, like the one that I'm standing in here in this video. As a small disclaimer here, I have suspicions that the material requirements for the Mark II pipes might change in future updates, as Coffee Stain adds more items into the game, but if they do, that uh, might also change the stage of where the Mark II pipes become generally available for us players to use in our factories. Do also note that the new Mark II pipes now mean that you can overclock a pure oil node to 250%, which is a really nice benefit from these new pipelines. And a final point to be made is that Coffee Stain has also stated that they will not be adding any higher tier pipelines, so these Mark II pipes will, at least according to what they have said, be the top tier pipeline in the final game. The next item on the list is the Packager Building. This uh, neat little building replaces the function that refineries used to have in regards to packaging and unpackaging your fluids. It saves you a healthy amount of power per building, as a packager requires 10 megawatts of power compared to a refinery's requirement of 30 megawatts of power, and it also has the added benefit of taking up far less space compared to a refinery, as you can see. The building does exactly what you'd expect from its name. If provided with a fluid and empty canisters, it packages the fluid into those canisters and outputs the result from its belt output slot, and oppositely, if you set it to unpackage a recipe, it will output the fluid that it is unpackaging from its pipe output slot and the empty canisters from its belt output slot. At the time that this tutorial is published, the packager has the pipe input and output above the belt uh, input and output on each side of the building, respectively, instead of having them side by side as most of the other fluid buildings in fact, all of the other fluid buildings that have both do have currently. Coffee Stain has specified that this is something that they are testing and that they want feedback on it. So when you're watching this tutorial, they might have changed that either to be a side-by-side -side layout on the packager, or alternatively, they may have changed all other fluid buildings to have a similar layout with the pipe input and belt uh, input and outputs on top of one another, like on the packager building. So you might have to adjust your builds accordingly, and I will also provide more tutorials on layouts and build tips in the upcoming months. Oh, and they also added the uh, new refinery model, which I will have to say that I really like it. Looks much better than the old one. Moving on to the next item, we have the new pumps. And yes, I do say pumps in plural here, as uh, Coffee Stain has also made some very impactful changes to the old pump. 
now known as the Mark I pump in-game, so I do consider it sufficiently changed that it almost feels like a new pump. As a minor point, uh, Coffee Stain reduced the size of the uh, pump quite significantly to reduce certain clipping issues, but more importantly, no longer do you have to manually measure out the head lift of your pipelines, as both the Mark I pump and the new Mark II pump emits a nifty blue circle around the pipeline, showing exactly how far it lifts the fluid. You can see up there, that's how far it'll go. With the Mark II pump, go all the way up. Or oh, almost. Additionally, when you need to add uh, more pumps for additional head lift for those really long pipes lifting fluids up to great heights, the pumps now snap to the next position of the pipeline so that you don't have to wing it when you place the pumps. The Mark II pump adds a healthy 50 meters of head lift compared to the 20 meters of head lift that the Mark I pump offers, but at a slightly higher power consumption cost. However, the amount of power that you save by using Mark I pumps is 4 megawatts of power for just 10 additional meters of head lift. A Mark II pump requires 12 megawatts of power for 50 meters of head lift, whereas 3 Mark I pumps also requires 12 megawatts of power for 60 meters of head lift. Finally, we have the new valve. This is a very nifty little device that you attach to your pipes like this, and it gives you the ability to control exactly how much fluid is allowed to pass through the pipeline. Additionally, it also provides you with the ability to make your pipeline a one-way pipe without having to expend any power using a pump to achieve this goal. So this pipe now, when liquid uh, flows from that segment to that segment, it cannot go back. But do take care to remember that with the pumps, and the valves, they are directional, the green arrows there. And you must pay attention when you place these to ensure that you are placing them with the directional arrows pointing the correct direction that you want your fluids to flow. So look carefully at the directional arrows on the valve and the pumps. And also for the pumps, you can pay attention to the direction that the blue rings are moving, as that is the direction that the pump will be pumping the fluid transported inside the pipeline. And that is a quick and concise roundup of the new stuff that we now have to play with in the Fluids update, also known as Update 3.6. Should you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section of the video, or you can come join us in our Discord server, where we have a dedicated channel for Satisfactory. You'll find the link to the Discord server in the description of this video. Thank you all so much for joining me, and I will see you all next time.